Very good. Thank you uh, and good morning. Um, so I am uh, Derek Giddos, for those of you who have not had an opportunity to uh, meet me uh, before. Uh, for those who I haven't met, I do you know, look forward to getting a chance to uh, not only you know, presenting to you here today, but also getting to, to meet you individually throughout the course of the next couple of days. So please feel free uh, to see me. Uh, come on by if you've got any ideas for enhancements and other opportunities for how we can improve our product. That's the you know, primary reason why I'm here. Uh, actually, it was supposed to be Jim Mooney making this presentation. For those of you who know Jim, you may be wondering why uh, I'm here instead. Uh, so Jim, unfortunately, uh, became quite uh, ill over the last uh, couple of days, so he just couldn't uh, make, make the travel. So I'm going to be filling in, um, which shouldn't be uh, too bad since most of the slides I created for Jim anyway. So I, I, I should be able to cover, cover the content without any problem. Uh, before I get into the actual uh, content, I, I wanted to first uh, thank, uh, well, first of all, thank all of you for coming to the conference and also thank the SIG Board of Directors for organizing it and for you know, inviting me here. I spend a good deal of my time talking to companies who don't uh, use OTM and they ask me you know, usual questions about you know, why, would, why would we you know, buy your transportation product versus somebody else's. And, and certainly we talk about all the great features and functions it has, but I always make a point and I think it sometimes is under, underestimated in terms of its importance. It's not just about buying the product, it's about buying into the community uh, that's around that product. And the best example that, I, that I'm able to give of that, of course, is the OTM SIG. Um, and it's of great credit to all the uh, directors, both current and past, who have helped make this uh, easily the, the most active uh, and valuable user community for any transportation product anywhere in the world. And certainly it's, it's a, one of the main reasons why the product continues to do, uh, uh, to do so well. Not only because you get to share information and make your uh, use of the product better and make the product better overall, but it also provides an introduction for those companies uh, who, who may be interested in using it, getting to see the type of community that they can participate in and the type of resources and knowledge sharing. Uh, that's out there. So I just wanted to give uh, a hand to the to the board of directors for making you know all of that happen, um, and for again your your active participation. Okay. All right. So I'm going to cover uh, in terms of content here today. I'm going to spend most of my time talking about uh, 6.3. Hopefully, all of you are aware. Uh, 6.3 was made generally available available for download uh, in late December. Uh, it's a major release. I certainly don't have time to go through all of the new features and functions here today. Uh, if you don't know how to access, I can certainly get you information on how to, you know, pull down all the latest information, the release content documents, the transfer of information presentations, and all the collateral that we produce that describe all the, the new features and functions. Uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about our new roll-up uh, strategy. So that's how we deliver incremental functionality on top of 6.3. There's some uh, new changes or, or changes coming down how we plan to uh, deliver those that we think will be, of again, a benefit to you. And again, we're making those changes because of the feedback that we've, that we've heard from you. Okay, I think maybe I'll just ask for a show of hands. Uh, so who here in the room is an active user of OTM or an active implementer of OTM, knows, knows the product to some degree? Okay, the vast majority, which is good. So I only put in one, one slide to kind of explain what Oracle Transportation Management is for those of you who may be, uh, you know, may be uh, new to it. So the whole point of our product is to support what we call the transportation uh, life cycle. Uh, it does you know, more stuff than that, but at its heart, it's all about managing orders, planning those orders into shipments, executing those shipments, tracking those shipments through from when they're picked up to when they're completed, and then managing the financial settlement aspect. So paying the third party service providers, perhaps billing the end customer if you're in the business of selling transportation services and understanding what that sort of total cost equation is. So that's OTM, you know, in a nutshell. Uh, in terms of 6.3, we made enhancements to every single part of the product. So whether that's in the financial settlement area or the execution area or the shipment planning area, 
a tremendous, again, number of enhancements. I think the release content document, which provides a summary of all the features, is 72 or 75 pages uh, in length. And again, that's just you know a paragraph or two on each, each feature. So there's a lot of content uh, that went in, into the release. Uh, and I'm going to kind of cover, again, sort of the major highlights um, in terms of either brand new areas that we sort of introduced, like mobile applications, or some of the other enhancements that I think are most noteworthy um, for me to talk about here today. All right, so the first one I want to discuss is uh, mobile. So of course, I'm sure right now, at least a third of the people are using their mobile devices, doing something while I'm talking. Um, and it's become not, not just, a, again, a, a phone for, you know, talking to folks. It's become a platform on, on which you're conducting uh, business. So just like we, you know, go to our uh, desktops to perform our business functions more and more, we want to be able to access the information or perform those same functions from, again, from a tablet, from a mobile uh, device. And so we've introduced our first set of mobile uh, features. Uh, later this afternoon, I'll be coming back and talking about the roadmap. And this is also uh, an active roadmap area as well. But 6.3 represents our first foray into the world of mobile applications. Uh, sort of covers four different uh, areas. We want to, again, get the uh, in this first release of the mobile capabilities, touch upon those areas that we thought would have the, the, the most and, and broadest use or biggest impact. So a lot of them around sort of the external facing carrier, you know, trucking company, haulier type interaction. So the tendering of shipments, the um, update of shipment status events, the performing track and trace, and then uh, business intelligence. And I'll go through some uh, screenshots or phone shots, if you like, uh, and talk through each one of those in a little more detail here in a moment. Uh, the other thing that we did is we certified, in quotations, certified uh, iPad uh, and Safari on iPad for most of the user interfaces. Again, just if you're familiar with using iPad, there's just some things that don't quite operate the same Safari-wise when you're on an iPad versus on a desktop. But most of the user interfaces should work just fine uh, on an iPad, which means all of your OTM functionality is now available on the go. All right, so the first area is in the shipment tendering. Uh, and so again, we, we worked with uh, a number of different customers on kind of getting input. You know, one of the biggest challenges when, um, you know, designing a mobile application is, of course, you have a lot less space to work with. And OTM tends to be kind of this data heavy um, uh, application. You know, you pull up a manager and there's 10 tabs and every tab has 100 fields on it. So how do you compress that down? So we did get quite a bit of input. And if this is an area that's of, you know, of interest to you, we're, we're interested in getting more input as well. Uh, so we built um, sort of these specific mobile pages that streamline each of these functions and puts what we think is just the essential information uh, on that UI. Uh, so this, this particular one I'm showing here is the uh, tendering. So again, any of your service providers with the same uh, credentials, the same login, the same user ID, and the same URL uh, can access their, their shipments that you have tendered to them, again, on their mobile device of choice. Uh, this isn't actually a mobile application per se. We developed it all using HTML5 technology, so it's basically the, taking advantage of the built-in you know, web browsing capabilities of the phones, which also means it's device independent, so iPhone or um, and so iOS or Android-based operating systems, uh, all, all of them are supported. Uh, but anyway, the service provider can log in. They can see their shipments. They can provide a response, accept or decline. Um, of course, because it is uh, part of the, the phone's operating system, we could take advantage of built-in features uh, such as, you know, being able to pop up an email. Uh, the links for phone numbers obviously uh, enable you to make calls. Uh, and then we've also taken advantage of the built-in mapping capabilities that all of the phones deliver as well. So if you want to, again, from the service provider's perspective, see information details, see the actual map street level view of the address of where the, you know, the pickup location is or where the delivery location is. Right. Yes. Uh, the question was about uh, GPS tracking and, and sort of live shipment tracking, taking advantage of that. 
Um, so I'm going to talk just now about the GPS uh, part of how this of how this works. So uh, the next major flow that we introduced was around shipment status, both in the collection of shipment status events as well as being able to query orders and shipments to get track and trace type information. So on the shipment status, we're taking advantage of two things that the phone can deliver for us. And one is the GPS coordinates. So when somebody goes to enter a shipment status event, they don't actually have to enter in the location information. We're going to be picking up that data just based off of the location of where the, where the phone is. Uh, it's not going to provide live shipment tracking per se because we're picking up the GPS coordinates of the phone, not the GPS coordinates of where the, you know, the physical shipment is. But if the service provider or if the person in the warehouse or in the yard, the person who's making, entering that status event, we're going to be able to pick up the location of where that status event is being entered based off of the GPS information that the phone's operating system delivers to us. Likewise, we capture the, the timestamp. That's the other information we can pull directly off the phone. So to enter a shipment status event then becomes very, very simple. All you have to do is select what status event from the drop-down list, from the pick list, and all the other information can default in. Uh, and then, so that's the capture of status event information, and then the sort of the, the use of it is then we can uh, enable users, again, to query on orders and shipments and see all of that event information, see that uh, track and trace history uh, for those uh, for those transactions. Right. Uh, and then the the last area was business intelligence. So I think uh, you know many of you, hopefully all of you, are familiar with the business intelligence capabilities we've built in the product uh, going back to five five CU three. I think that was the first time it it came out. So uh, new in 6.3 uh, is the ability to deliver all of those business intelligence dashboards, met metrics, and reports that you've created in OTM uh, and to have them all available on, again, mobile devices. So this is actually a feature that we get for free, per se, free in the sense that it's built into the Oracle business intelligence technology that OTM leverages. So this capability is true for any business intelligence application using that technology. Um, one of the features that I think is particularly nice about this one is there's no extra work involved. So if you've configured a particular report uh, for call it desktop use in OTM, all of those same reports are automatically available in the mobile application. So there's no additional, you know, I need to go set up the, the mobile version of this report or I need to enable it in some way. Um, just by default, it's it's all available. All right. So that was our work in in mobile for for 6.3. Like I said this afternoon, I'll talk a little bit more on the roadmap side uh, of where that's going. Okay. Uh, next little bit I wanted to talk about was more what I'll call user experience or user interface. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about the decision uh, control center, uh, also known sometimes as advanced layout. If you familiar with all the OTM te technology, or even dispatch board, I think it was called in its first rendition. Um, this capability, our, our, our motivating use case goes back a few years when we first introduced the fleet management functionality of OTM. Uh, and we felt it was important to have a user interface that would be what I'll call very uh, productive and information rich, if you will, and the amount of information that you could put into one user interface. And so we developed this uh, model, which we call, again, Advanced Layout or Decision Control Center, where you could configure in one window uh, multiple panes of information. So if I want on the top, you know, look at all my, have order information, on the bottom I have shipments or I have invoices, uh, I could effectively put in one UI all of the entities and all the information I needed to work with as opposed to our traditional way of you have a shipment manager and you query shipments, look at shipments, oh, you want to look at orders, so well, you have to go you know, pull up another UI to do that. So we delivered it, and I think it's one of the best yet not well-known features of OTM because when I spend time again, talking to customers about what we've done. I talk about the decision control center, and they're like, oh, when's that coming out? I'm like, well, actually, the first version came out in 6.0, which was a, a few years ago. And I think one of the reasons it's not well known is because we developed it, again, with this motivating use case of fleet management for people, again, to operate their own private fleets of drivers and vehicles. But it's actually not 
sold with fleet management. So you don't need to be using the fleet management module of OTM in order to make use of this user interface. Okay? And again, if you're not familiar with it, if you're not already using it, any version 6.0 and up has it. Obviously, the latest versions have more, more features and capabilities, but it's been out there for a while. Uh, and again, designed for that, you know, maximize, you know, my, my productivity. So that's in 6.2. What's new in 6.3? Uh, is well a few things so first of all um, a couple years back we introduced a brand new mapping capability being able to show orders and shipments and you know street level routes and things of that nature uh, in 6.3 we took that map view and it's now a component that you can embed in the decision control center so these decision control centers or advanced layouts it's all configurable so you control how many little windows appear in the UI, and now that map is one of those components that you can that you can configure to fit inside there. Uh, but the map is not just a, a static display. The map, like the other windows, uh, can interact with one another. So if I'm going to do functions like um, from from the map, I can select orders, I can select shipments, I can take orders, I can assign them to shipments, and there's an interaction now between that what I do on the map and what is it happening in the tables or the tabular views and vice versa. So I select the shipment, for example, in the map and my shipment table that's also shown in the view that shipment is going to be highlighted. Likewise, if I had selected the shipment, it's going to highlight in the map. All right, so that's what that's all about. The other new feature is that you can create child tables which means now the data that shows up in these tables can be dynamically refreshed based off of what I've selected in another table. So a common, so some common use cases for that would be with shipments. So a shipment can have many orders on it. So when I select a shipment, my shipment order table will show me all the orders that are on it. Or that could be shipment stops. So I select the shipment, my shipment stop table is going to refresh with all the stops. Invoices, you kind of get the idea. And again, this is all configurable. So if, if the relationship exists in the data inside of OTM, you can build the you can build parent tables and child tables and have them uh, operate again as a configuration, not as a you know coding level uh, exercise. Right? And again, it's not tied to fleet management, so you don't have to use the fleet management product in order to make use of this. It's general general base OTM capability. All right, so uh, business intelligence, again, this has become one of our most, you know, sort of popular uh, products. You know, a few years ago, business intelligence was sort of, I think, largely seen as one of those nice to have or phase two type things, you know, we'll, to get our transportation system running, and then a little bit later, we'll, we'll, we'll look at business intelligence and analytics. And now we're seeing it as a sort of primary, you know, phase one, you know, companies are looking to get the business intelligence and analytics uh, up front in, in the early part of their projects. So we've put in a lot of uh, a lot of work into it. Uh, some of it I've already talked about in terms of mobile, but there's also uh, additional new features relative to 6.3. Uh, so part of what we do in every release is we add to the content. By the content, I mean the data that's available inside the business intelligence model for reporting. Uh, and one of the new features that we added in 6.3 is the concept of flex fields. Now, if anyone here uses any uh, Oracle, like eBusiness Suite type application, you probably know what flex fields are. Uh, if you don't, flex fields are basically placeholder fields at the database level that have been introduced for all the major objects inside of OTM. So in the old days, you know, pre 6.3, if you wanted to extend the data model, the easiest way to do that was you added ref nums or, you know, qualified reference numbers or qualified remarks. And there's always a, you know, it's a pair of entities you have to do. That, you know, the qualifier and the value. So, which is a very, you know, good way of doing it. Um, but there are situations where, again, it, customers said, well, that doesn't always work for us, especially when we have a lot of, uh, of ref nums that we work with. So we adopted a model that some of our colleagues have been using for a long time in, with the Oracle eBusiness Suite, which is the concept of flex field. So every major entity now, shipments, orders, they all have placeholder fields. So there's a certain number of date fields, a certain number of you know, number fields, and you can then use them for whatever you want. Uh, and then they 
automatically are available in any of the user interfaces. And they're also now automatically available inside of the business intelligence for reporting and analytics. Um, besides adding new features, we also know it's important to have documentation, at least time the time have some documentation. So one of our big efforts in 6.3 was improving the documentation that we have for our business intelligence products. How do you, how do you customize you know, the ETL layer? How do you, um, you know, tips on how do I migrate from, if I'm doing an upgrade from you know, 6.1 to 6.3? So we continue to, to add in that area as well. And then last but not least, we upgraded uh, to the latest versions of the Oracle Business Intelligence Technologies that we use. So some more acronyms in case you don't have enough in your collection. Uh, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition, O-B-I-E-E. -E, that's basically what the user sees. So that's the actual user interface generation of the reports and so forth. Uh, and then ODI, which is Oracle Data Integrator. That is the back-end tool that's used to take operational data out of, out of OTM and transform it into the analytical model, which we do. We, we, that's what we deliver as part of our product. But why it's important for you to know about it is because most people, and not most, all, who implement our business intelligence also want to pull data from other systems besides OTM. And ODI is the technology that would, you would use to, to, to do that. Right, so I talked about new content. I talked about flex fields. That was something that was new. Uh, we also extended the content for our fleet users. So now, again, if you're using OTM to manage your private or dedicated fleet, we've built out a whole set of uh, metrics that can be used to create reports and create dashboards around the fleet. So common metrics like what's the utilization of my fleet, uh, what's the service level performance of my fleet, and also to be able to do comparisons between cost and service and other performance criteria of the fleet versus the third-party common carriers. Okay, So that's all now content available um, out of the box. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to highlight that there's some, uh, again, free features that we get for free uh, by going to the newest versions of the underlying uh, technology. So one was mobile. I talked about that in the beginning. So that's a feature of Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition 11G. I had to practice that a lot this morning to have that roll off. Uh, but there's other features of 11G that are quite useful. One is it has a built-in mapping capability. So now, in addition to you know all the graphs and charts that you you know we're all used to in terms of uh, reports, there's now also a built-in mapping capability, and you can make use of it also as a display mechanism to put your business intelligence content on. Uh, there's also a much easier way to set up and define uh, targets for the different KPIs that you might be uh, measuring. Uh, and then there's also, for, for those of you who want to really extend um, your business intelligence application, there's sort of this uh, programming type language, if you will, so that when I run reports um, and the outcomes of those reports, I can do things from as simple as, you know, obviously have them, you know, generated an email to different people or I can have them invoke, um, uh, you know, invoke actions, invoke web services, invoke Java. So you can actually have the results of the business analytics actually drive different functions inside the application, whether that's inside of OTM or inside of, or uh, invoke other applications. All right, so that's the business intelligence. Uh, fleet management, um, we introduced this, the first version, back in uh, 6.0, and we've been enhancing it in every, every release since. So again, at a high level, if you're not familiar with it, it's, we, we took that transportation life cycle that I um, went over quickly earlier, and we extended that life cycle so that we can manage not just you know um, equipment in a general sense, but we can manage specific pieces of equipment, so specific trailers, specific containers as well as the individual drivers or teams of drivers who may be you know, involved in, in moving the goods. So again, for those companies that operate a private fleet uh, or a dedicated fleet environment or you're a logistic service provider and you provide dedicated you know, fleet type services, then now you can use OTM to manage to this additional level of, uh, level of detail. In terms of what's new in 6.3, again, some enhancements uh, sort of across that life cycle. So planning, we did a number of enhancements in planning to accommodate scenarios like slip seating. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with that term, but that's basically where uh, a single truck is used across multiple shifts. So you have different drivers using the same vehicle throughout the course of the 
24 hour day and how do, how do we manage and those relationships and plan that accordingly in OTM. We also added additional decision support functions like being able to you know automatically you know find uh, potential backhaul assignments, uh, automatically find potential shipments I can assign the driver if I need to route them back to his home domicile or home depot. Um, not Home Depot, the store, Home Depot, the home location. Um, and then, of course, I, I showed you the mapping, the new work we did in Decision Control Center. And again, for a fleet user, a lot of our um, sort of use cases are designed around, well, I, I want OTM to automatically plan all the shipments and routes, which it does. But then during the course of the day, I need to be able to manually manipulate and deal with exceptions. So things like a last minute order. Now, again, using that mapping interface, we can show the order, show the existing routes, or show the unassigned orders, and be able to automatically generate recommendations on which routes and show that geographically. OK. Uh, so next, I want to talk about shipment planning. Um, you know, for all the uh, features we put into OTM, still, the I would say, the most highly utilized and generates the most number of enhancement requests is in the planning uh, planning area. And so we did quite a bit of work here as we've done uh, through through every release. And I, I would believe I'm on solid ground when I say we have now the most sophisticated set of planning ca capabilities of any transportation management system on the market, which is both good and sometimes a curse. Uh, so one of the big features we added was this new planning concept. Uh, it's both a new planning algorithm and also a new set of setups, which hopefully will simplify things for you, which we often refer to as multi-tier networks. So what's a multi-tier network? It's basically any time you're transporting goods and they go through one or more intermediate locations. If you have that, then chances are we can use the new multi-tier network framework to both model it and to plan it. So some common use cases are, you know, cross docks, um, hub and spoke, you know, type networks, or even networks where it's not necessarily a consolidation or deconsolidation driven activity, but maybe it's just exchange points where you switch from, you know, one mode of transport uh, to to another. So we had two goals with this uh, work, which I think from an OTM perspective was the single largest feature in terms of person effort that went into it. One was to help simplify the setup. And the second was to improve the performance, both the solution quality and the runtime performance of the algorithm that is running in when you run, invoke Bulk Planner, uh, the magic that's happening to actually produce the results. Okay. So by um, simplifying setup, what I'm referring to is minimizing the need. In, in the past, you would have, if you had a, a complicated network with many different routes that the order could take from its origin to its final destination, you'd have to set up potentially uh, a lot of itineraries uh, in order for OTM to make all those considerations. And so what we've attempted to do here is to minimize that setup so that we're only defining what we'll call legs for simplicity here. And you don't need to set up itineraries to sort of help enumerate all the possibilities. Instead, OTM will automatically determine all those possibilities. So if there are six different ways to connect a given origin to a given destination, the routing algorithm, the new multi-tier algorithm, will figure those out for you. You don't have to sort of predefine them. Uh, we also got rid of certain limitations, like the maximum number of cross docks that we can consider. So if someone, you know, if you have a transportation network where you could again flow orders through, I don't know, five cross docks, something you know, sort of very extreme, uh, you can now model that type of scenario um, with this capability. And then, of course, the other our other goal was to improve the the solution quality, both from again a a performance runtime as well as you know producing a more optimal answer. So if you have any type of network that matches what I described before, uh, you definitely want to uh, look at this uh, feature and sort of understand how that would hopefully make life better for you. Um, you know, at some point, some point in the future when you upgrade to these capabilities. All right. The next area is around ship unit uh, optimization. Uh, what's a ship unit? anything you want it to be. So for us, of course, it's it's the level of packaging that we're planning at. So the ship unit is a pallet. The ship unit is a is a drum. It's the transportation entity that we're using to figure out how much capacity we're going to use up on the piece of equipment as we load ship units onto it. 
up until 6.3, uh, we had spent a lot of energy on improving what we called load optimization or load configuration. So that's all about determining how can I fit ship units into a piece of equipment. So how do I maximize the utilization of volume and weight in the you know in a trailer or in a container by you know loading looking at different configurations of how I can load ship units. All right. What's new in 6.3 is we extended that same concept down to the creation of the ship units themselves. So in prior to 6.3, you would have had to have told OTM, here's how my item is going to get packaged. So this item is going to ship on a pallet, or this item is going to be, you know, ship in these type of boxes. The, the challenge with that, at least for some of our customers, is that the transportation decision itself is what determines how to package the product. And so what we've been able to do now in 6.3 is rather than have to perhaps make a, a mode decision up front or make a packaging decision up front, we can now make the transportation decision and the packaging decision all as part of one plan. Right? So with some use cases for that, so we have, um, I don't think they have any representatives here, but one of the customers we worked with on this was uh, uh, Beckman Coulter, which is a life sciences uh, company. A lot of small parcel, a lot of less than truckload shipping. Uh, and so given, you know, their products, that's, you know, depending on the quantity, they're going to, the best, the cheapest way to ship it is going to be small parcel, or if they have enough quantity of that product, they will ship it less than truckload. And the thing is, the packaging of the product depends on what mode you're going to use. So now with, in, in the prior to 6.3, you would have had to make that decision before you actually plan the shipments. And now in 6.3, that's an outcome of planning the shipment. So in this particular example, uh, again, I, I, can, I can package it for small parcel, in which case it's going to go into four boxes, or if I have enough and an LTL is the, is the lower cost decision, then OTM will determine the ship unit configuration for it as a pallet instead of boxes. Right? So this is very powerful, I would say. Again, if, particularly if you're you know, having this type of transportation operation where, again, the, the ship unit creation or the packaging is actually a decision that really should be driven by what's the best way to ship it as opposed to something you need to plan up front. Uh, another use case, another motivating example for us is where the packaging of the product actually changes as the goods are being moved. So again, we had another um, one of our customers with this use case where, again, on the, the first leg of its journey, there may be partial uh, pallets because they're collecting goods from a lot of different suppliers and then they're bringing those goods into a consolidation center uh, and then maybe they're you know, loading them into you know, full, uh, full ocean containers. And the packaging of the, of the products is going to change. So they're going to get maybe loose items or partial pallets from the suppliers on the first leg and then they're going to build consolidated pallets on that second and subsequent leg. So now OTM can do that uh, automatically. So it can determine not only the ship unit, but can also determine how that ship unit packaging would change over the course of its journey. Right? So fairly complicated um, use cases, uh, but again, if you have these types of scenarios, now it's going to be a lot easier to manage that, or at least be able to not only manage it, but plan for it uh, inside of OTM. Okay, so mo moving on, uh, the next area I want to talk about is demerge uh, or detention, um, different words, uh, but basically this is the scenario where because you're using the equipment from some third party, from a railroad, from a steamship line, from a trucking company, uh, if you don't return that equipment in a specified time frame, you're going to incur additional charges uh, for its use. So maybe you get the container. Uh, and you get uh, 48 hours to unload it and, you know, call the steamship line back up and tell them the empty container is ready to pick up. Or it's rail car that was placed at your site for loading. You have a certain amount of time before you can have it loaded and ready before, again, additional charges are going to occur. So we can now m manage that scenario uh, in OTM. So a few things we've, we've introduced to support that. One is you can, first of all, model the cost parameters. So think of setting up rates, but now rates that model the demerge transaction. So how many free days or how much free time do I get of the equipment before the charges will begin to uh, incur? Uh, and what are those charges, you know, cost per hour, cost per day, uh, and so forth. 
Uh, and then as I'm actually executing shipments, um, I want to be able to track basically different timers. So again, I, I receive the shipment, I get an event, you know, I receive the vehicle or the, the container was dropped in my facility. That's, I can now use that inside of OTM to start the clock ticking uh, on a potential demurrage or detention transaction. And then when I return the car or another event occurs, it's going to close that clock off. And so what you have now inside of OTM is an ability to um, manage and monitor all the potential shipments and use of equipment where demerge either could occur, uh, demerge charges, detention charges could occur, uh, and to help you, again, minimize those actual uh, incurrences. If you do, of course, go over and begin to you know, uh, go over the clock, go over the free days, then OTM will also calculate what the expected liability is. In other words, what expected invoice that you're going to receive for the use of for the use of that equipment so again so for anyone who's running again um, rail car ocean container that type of equipment again a very very useful set of features for us in 6.3 uh, and then the last area I wanted to talk about in terms of an OTM feature was uh, document management not as not as sassy if you will as mobile perhaps but uh, Managing documents, shipping documents is a, is a core part of what, what transportation folks do day in and day out. And so we added a lot of capability here to really make documents um, what I'll call a, a first class citizen uh, along with other objects inside of OTM. So prior to this feature, you could generate a document. We use Oracle uh, BI Publisher. That's the, the tool, if you will, that generates the document. You could generate it. You could you know email it out. Uh, what's new in 6.3 is now the document has its own uh, life cycle. So I can define statuses uh, for those documents. I can define, uh, obviously, workflow associated with that. Uh, I can define um, concepts of reviewers and subscribers to documents. So I can produce the document, and then before I distribute it, there might be a review and approval step. I can, you can configure who those reviewers are. Uh, you can manage multiple revisions of documents inside of OTM. So I produced the document one time. I needed to make a change to it, so I'm going to, you know, store those store those revisions. All now again managed and configurable inside of OTM. It's not just a a, a PDF that gets generated. All right. So those are the Oracle Transportation Management highlights. What I also wanted uh, to do here this morning was give you some of the highlights around the sister or brother product, if you will, which we call global trade management, uh, because that's become one of our major focus areas of new development in building out not just international transportation related functionality, which we've uh, been working on in OTM for a number of years, but also supporting the import and export compliance issues associated with moving products across borders. All right, so if you're not familiar with it, again, just a, a quick high level snapshot of what when we say global trade management, what do we mean by it? Uh, for us, it's, it's looking at the different functions that you need to account for whenever you are moving products across borders. So you're importing products into a country, you are exporting products out of a country. Uh, and there's a whole set of functions, business needs around compliance and managing that. Everything from classifying uh, the products, what are the you know, HTS codes uh, and other product classifications. Uh, compliance rules, you know, can I import this, do uh, import this product, can I export it, do I need a license, do I have a license available. Obviously producing documentation, filings with cus uh, customs and, and so forth. So we set off to build our first global trade, or we delivered our first global trade management capabilities in the 6.1 release. Uh, and you'll notice that we use the same uh, numbering scheme, we may refer to them as two different products. Uh, but in reality, it, f for us as a product team, it's all one. It's all one product, okay. and we think that has some advantages. Uh, again, so for for those of you who are already deployed Oracle Transportation Management and you want to make use of the Global Trade Management features, um, it's all there. Obviously, you you need to license it, of course, because we don't give stuff away. Uh, but from a deployment perspective, it's just another set of menu options on the, on the left-hand side. And if you're already integrating into your ERP environments to get 
uh, item data and orders and shipments and all that, all that same information can be leveraged uh, inside of global trade management as well. Uh, with that said, we do actually um, sell it and it can be deployed standalone and we have customers today who are just using the global trade management uh, features. You don't need to use transportation. There's no dependency on either a licensing or a setup perspective. But our targeted use case, the reason we built it this way is we felt there would be a very compelling business uh, advantage for folks if they had one system that was managing all their transportation uh, activity as well as managing all the import and export compliance related activity. Right. So in 6. Uh, prior to 6.3, there were two modules that made up the global trade management feature set, what we call global trade management, sort of the base set of capabilities, uh, and then trade compliance, uh, which was a, a rules engine for determining trade controls. So we enhanced uh, those both significantly. In, in addition, we added a whole new module, which we call Oracle Customs Management, which is our first first step in, in supporting uh, customs procedures uh, out of our GTM product. All right. So again, I'll, there's a lot more uh, behind what I'm going to discuss in the next few minutes, but what I wanted to do is highlight some of the new, again, sort of major areas of enhancement around global trade. Uh, so restricted party screening or denied party screening, that's sort of the most basic uh, trade compliance function. Right? So before I Sell, sell a product to this customer or before I ship the product or before I buy from this supplier, I want to make sure that, that that party is not on some government list of parties that as a business I'm not supposed to be doing business with. Uh, in addition to supporting what call government or regulatory lists, we can also support an internal lists. So we have one customer, for example, not only do they screen against all their, um, again, mandated lists of parties that they can't do business with? They also maintain their own blacklist of customers who may have, again, maybe not paid their bills or maybe they tried to, you know, they were fraudulent and trying to return products that they never bought or for whatever reason, uh, they've, they've set them up as a denied party. So inside of GTM, we can, we can capture those different lists and then screen uh, different transactions. That transaction might be a sales order, it might be a purchase order, it might be a shipment, it might be a service, it doesn't even have to be a physical product. What's new in, in 6.3 is we built a, a brand new uh, workbench for managing this re uh, denied party screening process. And if you look carefully, and if it, this screenshot looks somewhat from similar to the decision control center I spoke about earlier, that's because they are one and the same. It's just that we've, we've taken that same general capability of the decision control center and built a, um, a uh, task specific use case around restricted party screening. And the whole goal here of this particular enhancement is for those companies that are dealing with, you know, potentially thousands, tens of thousands of transactions a day, which may be generating hundreds or thousands of potential denied party hits a day, they need to be very productive and how they are able to review them and make a decision, okay, yes, this is, a, this is indeed a valid hit, meaning it's a, it's a party that I can't do business with, or no, this isn't, this, isn't the, this isn't the party that's on the list and I can go ahead with the transaction. So put a lot of effort into kind of streamlining that process in terms of being able to review and resolve these potential matches. Um, another major enhancement area for us was around licenses. Uh, again, we call them licenses, but it's a generic framework for modeling any type of authorization that you may need before you uh, import or export a product. So some use cases, again, for, for those companies who deal with, again, sort of controlled goods. So aerospace and defense is a great example where almost every product they ship is subject to these types of controls. Before you can actually export it, you need to have a license in place uh, and you need to have an available balance on that license so that that license may be only good for a certain period of time. It may only be good for a certain quantity. Uh, in some cases, that they're specific to a given port of export. In some cases, they're specific to just a, a given you know, end user. So now inside of GTM, we can manage all of those licenses uh, both the setup of the license and the usage of it. So as we're processing transactions, shipments, sales orders, uh, and we have items on there that are subject to authorization, some type of licensing or authorization control, we can flag them and then we can automatically determine do we have a license available that I could use to support that transaction, assign the license, 
and then have, have the transaction continue on in its life cycle. All right. So again, being able to manage all those different licenses from a setup procedure, um, having them all set up inside of GTM, and then most importantly, having those licenses available and having GTM either automatically assigning a license or giving the user a list of available licenses that they can select from, assign to the transaction, and then allow it to continue. Uh, and then the last area uh, around uh, global trade management that I want to highlight was the new product we introduced called Oracle Customs Management. And as the name implies, it's, it's to help folks deal with their customs-related procedures. Uh, so a few features here. One is um, we enhanced uh, the same rules engine that we, that we used to determine you know, when is a license required. We've now enhanced that to help determine for a given transaction what type of filings are required for it. Uh, and to also determine what document template, if you will, is going to associate so I can generate that filing, and then to prepare the data uh, for the filing. So I can run the rules engine. Uh, I have a, have a shipment, given the type of product or given where it's going. I'm going to make these types of, I need to produce these either hard copy documents or I need to make these electronic filings. All right. Then we can also set up rules inside of uh, GTM, data validation and data conversion rules. So for example, when I, you know, on, the, on a sales order level, it's specified in um, euros and, and kilos, but I'm bringing it into the US, so I need to convert everything into US dollars and I need to convert everything into pounds before I actually make the filing with the US authority. So all that is now set up and managed uh, inside of GTM. And all of the document revisioning and statusing that I referred to earlier as an OTM feature is also available here inside of GTM as well. All right, so that's the sort of quick uh, overview of everything we've been working on for the last two years in 45 minutes. What I wanted to do next is, and this is where Jim would have been valuable, but I'll, I'll do my best to cover his, his normal sort of content. Let's talk about kind of what we're doing next as far as how we're managing uh, roll-ups and so on. Uh, before I get to that, just a reminder. Uh, so find the, find the release of OTM that you're currently using, and if you don't know it, those dates are kind of important for you. Uh, first column is when Premier support ends. Uh, and again, we don't do anything special for OTM. By special, I mean we follow the same kind of five-year premium Premier support window that other Oracle products do. Once Premier support ends, then uh, in most cases, the only exception being 6.0, we offer extended support, which means you can pay a little bit more and get sort of keep that support window uh, going in terms of the, the availability of us to create and deliver bug fixes for you. Uh, and then there's sustaining support, which means we're always here to answer the phone and try to help you, but you know we don't make enhancements, we don't make bug fixes, okay? So 5.5, uh, for anyone who's still running on one of the 5.5, doesn't matter which cumulative update it is, the November 2013 is an important time frame because that's when extended support ends. Right? And for the latest release, which came out in December 2012, now we've got a full five-year window on that in terms of its premier, premier support window. Uh, in terms of roll-ups, continue to, uh, this was just sort of the summary of all the, the roll-ups we've delivered on 6.2, the most recent one in December, which is 6.2.8. And again, roll-ups are primarily bug fixes, although I'm not allowed to say bug fixes, so corrections, it's the more appropriate term, uh, as well as enhancements. And one of the things that's going to, reason I have that in, have this in here, is that one of the things that's going to be changing is that we're going to be doing more enhancements inside of roll-ups. So roll-ups are going to become bigger releases in terms of net new functionality, not just correcting functionality, but net new functionality that we'll deliver as part of a roll-up. Uh, but there's also going to be some changes that will be, again, of, besides new features, uh, additional benefit uh, for you. So we're planning to go to about a four-month uh, cycle. So the first roll-up on 6.3, which will be 6.3.1, will probably be in the March, uh, April time frame. And then every four months uh, after that, we'll see additional um, additional roll-ups on 6.3. Right now, we're planning all the way out to a 6. 632, 633, and a 634. I don't know if it'll be a 635, but at least four 
rollups are already in the works for 6.3. Uh, one of the big changes for us is that we'll be able to patch against specific rollups in the old days. Uh, in order to get a bug fix, you would always have to go to the latest version, the latest rollup, in order for us to get you that bug fix, unless you were really, really, really nice to Jim and could somehow convince him that you didn't have to do that. Uh, but now as a matter of course, um, we're, we're managing the software to the point where, again, we can make patches against specific roll-up versions without, so again, if you're on 6.2.2 and the latest is 6.2.3, uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to go to 6.2.3 in order to get that, get that fix. Uh, the other thing that's new is that we're adding, again, by, by design, we're going to make these roll-ups larger. So rather than... So 6.3 took a, a sizable chunk of time for us in terms of working on all the features. Uh, so what we've decided is that we need to have some additional releases so that we don't have to necessarily you know, go through a full 18-month or 24-month cycle to get those features to the market, particularly for product areas that are newer, like global trade or, or that there's a lot of interest in, like mobile and fleet and so on. So now we're going to uh, expand the range of features that we will consider for a roll-up. So making incremental uh, database modifications, making incremental changes to the XML uh, interfaces and so on. Uh, but we also know that additional new features sometimes are not what people want. Uh, and so they want, sometimes they may want the ability to effectively turn those on or off as the case might be. So we'll put in place a mechanism for basically parameterizing those new features. So if you take a roll-up but you don't necessarily want to take the new behavior of a certain feature, you can control that. Okay, so what's similar, uh, so even though we will have that ability to patch backwards, again, it'll still be on an exception basis uh, in terms of backporting of bugs, and we will not backport enhancements. So if we add a brand new feature and 6.3.3 and you really want it on 6.3.2, uh, that's not going to happen, right? Uh, but at least from a bug fix perspective, we will have the ability and we will, you know, look at each one of those and determine whether or not that makes sense and whether it's feasible and be able to deliver that for you. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say, please stay current on all the, on all the roll-ups. That makes it, makes it the uh, easiest for everyone. All right, well, I'm at the end of my time, so uh, thank you very much. And again, if you have any questions uh, about 6.3 or roll-ups or any of that, please feel free to uh, reach out to me during the course of the next couple of days or email me you know, at your leisure. Thank you.